DC CEO, Ms. Valerie Vera, Deputy CEO, Mr. Harold Davis, speakers, exhibitors, media, and most importantly, those who invested $2,500 to come here. And we're clapping yourself. People come here to come and make some noise. People come in free and make some noise. And we should have embarrassed ourselves. Be yourself. Let me tell you something. Anywhere you go, anytime you go, anyhow you go, yourself is going to be there with you. You cannot get away from yourself. Be yourself. I am still trying to be myself. I've been trying for many years. As a matter of fact, in the creative industry, I was never confident that this was going to be my field, comedy. I wanted to sing. You know, I wanted to sing, sing, sing. Sing was my thing. I, I, couldn't, I, I, I couldn't do anything else, you know? Singing was my thing. Matter of fact, I saw somebody uh, recently when I was um, emceeing a concert, this talented Jamaica dancer, Jamaican dancer, on stage, seeing performing. Shh! Eek, 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 Michael Jackson dance in 2019. And I said, why 2019 this talented Jamaican dancer still doing Michael Jackson dance moves? Create your own, you know? Think about it, the Jamaicans have a pension for creating their own dances. Because I'm sure if a dancer was up here, I'd probably create a dance name. Kid would speak. You never the speech. Do the speech now. Do the microphone. Do the speech now. And the speech. That's a speech. You know, cast them still. So, I am trying to be myself. I told you before, singing was my thing. As a matter of fact, at, at some point in my life, I went and did vocal lessons. Yes, I was trained. I was trained by Pauline Forrest Watson, Master of Fine Arts. Trained in Russia, even her husband, Curtis Watson, the opera singer. Yes, I would go there every Saturday morning. Trust me, I'd go there for vocal lessons. And then I'll go home and come back next week. And then I'll go home and I'll come back next week. Could have come by that week then. <laughs> that week they did too much for me. And I, 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 was I, I, I was confused about my ability to sing because I am from a family of singers. For those who know me, I am from my cousin sing. Anybody watch the ITM fans got you? Those are Ross, Rosa Rose. No, Rosa, Lucky Back. You can't sing, I'm a cousin. I mean, my neighbors, you can't sing. As a matter of fact, when I discovered that my father was a singer, I, I, I couldn't believe why I, I, I can't sing. Uh, of course, you know the song, um, Girl, I've got a day. My father sing, uh huh. <laughs> no, 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 laugh, listen. No, listen, listen, listen. That uh uh is important. Who <laughs> is my father? My father sing, uh huh. I'm a matter of fact, the hour was so important, they sing it twice. <laughs> Girl, I've got a date. Oh. That just means I can't stay late. Oh. oh. It was important. So, I, I, don't, I don't understand why I can't sing. At the time, I was working. I work for Christopher Blackwell, well-known entertainment magnet, mogul. I mean, you know Christopher Blackwell. I think he's famous for introducing Bob Marley to the world. Uh, I'm after Christopher Blackwell, uh, our outfit of companies, Allen Outpost, I work for Allen Jamaica. At the time, they did two films, Terrell Cup and Dance Our Queen. Why did I leave my job? I was working for Christopher Blackwell. As a matter of fact, right now, the Christopher Blackwell Global Companies, Golden Eye particularly, they are the home. Actually, that was where the first James Bond film 
was conceptualized. You know that, right? Yeah. That was, and they are right now doing the 25th in some of the series. So if I was still there, maybe I'd be the first black bond. <laughs> you know? The name is Bond. IT Bond. <laughs> you know, I don't know, I don't know. It possibly it could, it could happen. I tell you something, but I, 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 I left my job. But the question is, was that where the story started? Where did the story start? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I am what is called in popular Jamaican vernacular a wash belly. The last child of eight children, born and grow, Third Street, Rima, Trenchstone. Eight, when you're the last of eight children, it means you, you almost never bother. Come. <laughs> A matter of fact, I discovered my, my brother I followed, his name is Baby. <laughs> Them call a big brother Baby. And he just recently down with me. I said, hold on a second. You know, mothers when they have children, the big one, they say, oh, this is the big one. And this one followed the one, then the one there. And that one is the baby. Then how oh, come the seventh child is called Baby? All, all of my life, I, they, they call, even as an adult, they call him, I'm a in, in, in the ghetto, big man, no for me, baby. With a rough thing for me. One time, I get in a fight and I want to go for me, big brother, and say, Eba! Go for my brother, baby. <laughs> Never come out, you know? Fear. So I said, baby, me, I wasn't supposed to be here. But I'm the eighth child. I know it is new beginning. I'm a tangled silly bear. You know? I'm a tangled mother. She loved me so much. I tell her, she called me a little black prince. She carried me go everywhere. She carried me go everywhere, nearly every day. As she, she sold her variety goods at the corner of Hayward Street and Orange Street. <laughs> yeah. And I tell her, um, I learned so many things in those early days, but it was tough for us, for all of us. Because, you know, in the ghetto, you know, poverty, you can't get far from it. Hunger, we know that, we know that good because, and every day she sell. Some days she sell and she come home and no food the day. For real, we have to go through. Matter of fact, I had no lunch money for most of my time at school, you know? Most of my time, I remember having lunch money a lot of time. Matter of fact, uh, she encouraged me to sell things that help supplement my lunch money. You know, anybody here know Kisco? Yes. I date myself. Oh, so my friend, no Kisco. You know, she said Kisco, 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 Kisco. For the young people, them popsicle and same thing. I used to sell Kisco. And the thing is, at that time, I was embarrassed to sell Kisco. I was still it on the bus, and I never want my friend name. I sent Aloysius, that school I attended, Duke Street Bay, St. Aloysius Primary. See me and sell Kisco for some strange reason. But she wanted to sell Kisco, so she was encouraging her entrepreneurial spirit in me from a very long time. But I said, it was very rough. I told her, I used to come from St. Aurelius Primary, a Duke Street based uh, primary school, come over to where she sell. And the park, St. William Grand Park, for those who know downtown, was right across from where she sell. And we used to go over the park and play regularly. Every day we go over there and play. I remember one day, um, my friends and I, well, I thought they were my friends. We were playing in the park, and the pipe bus. This one section of the park flood out, and the lady come and I say, who bust the pipe? Everybody get panic now and fight. Who bust the pipe? My friends. Say, miss, are the black one, miss? I'm pointing for me. And the lady look at me and say, him? That's why anything you see too black never come out to nothing good yet, you know? Can't forget that to this day. But it never fails me. I remember my mother's delight when I passed the common entrance. I mean, Jesus. Said, Gee. <laughs> Anybody else here the common entrance? Yes. Maths and English and? Clap for yourself, clap for yourself, it passed convention. Thank you. 
When I pass common angels, I know my mother's delight when I discover value and self-esteem. She jump, she scream, she say, yes, me son, me win the prize, me win the prize, yes, up and down Third Street, everybody knows that I to pass common entrance. It was public knowledge. I remember that time when you were successful, your name came in the, in the paper. Oh my word, man. It's Sunday down, seriously. And mother's there at a function, and my sister was reminding me. She said, I do see when you pass. Miss me. We call her Miss me. Go on with your, with the newspaper, show all the fish members in Park Hero Street. See me, son, I may win the prize. And I even know what I'm saying. She said, I won the prize. She said, I won the prize. And I took some time to try to analyze that statement. She never said, my son, but they said, I won the prize. I'm the last child of eight children. The ones that I follow, I my brothers who barely could read. You know, the ones I follow barely could read. I don't know how I, how I can read. You know, I mean, reading was <laughs> not, but making for lack of singing. But she, she said, and my sister said, said to tell her that, listen, the paper get old and I put it down. So we are going to be able to tell the paper get, you know? But they say, we win the prize. And I realize that education at the time, very important. I never grew up with any father. You know, we, long after, when I became an adult, I made father. But I grew up with Mr. Harvey, my stepfather. And my stepfather is one thing I know I learned early. There's something about reading. Because when I go and visit him, then his workplace, he was often intoxicated. When you see me, she not come here, come here, come watch us, watch us. See this boy, this boy, watch, watch. Anybody have any newspaper? Let me see if I can be in this paper coming. Let me show you something. Come, 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 come. Many people come, come. Read this and show them this. I'm going to get it on this. <clears throat> Monetizing the orange economy. The future is creative. Laughing all the way to the bank. Creativity meets business. You sure? You sure? This boy is a genius. Every day, tell people say, This boy is a genius. Words on his power, you know. I tell him, but I tell you something, words on his power. I think he spoke it over my life and I embrace it and still is embracing it. This boy is a genius. He win the prize. This boy is a genius. I, I'm embracing it. Even to this day, I tell you. But I tell you, in, in, in high school, after I passed coming in chance, it was tough. I never had lunch at school earlier. And there was a boy, anyway, you know, this is being taken. Uh, Steve Chin. Anyway, I don't remember this, look a black boy. You know, when I went to St. George's College, I was around well-to-do students, you know? They were well off, in my estimation. And this, this boy got lunch every day. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> no, 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 come for me to get lunch. Every day. And i tell you something. He was very kind. One day, I see him at lunch, and I ask him, see him. I can give one a sandwich and then give me one. Let me tell you something. When you help someone in need, they will never forget you when they're in need again. <laughs> what that done? Anybody miss it? Say it again. Yeah. When you help someone in need, they will never forget you when they are in need again. So the next day when him come, stay home. Say him give me. The other day, stay home. He give me. I tell you something, Steve, give me lunch till him get tired of me that one time. One time Steve gets tired of me. When lunch time come now, I'm going to say to him, let's go so. He never look for him, let's go so. Can no one want, you know? We'll take it still. No one wants money. So we'll take it. I tell you, I tell you something. When I was in third from St. George's College, my, my, my students, fellow students will remember this. They wrote on the board one day I bought lunch. I tell you, my sister, child not fine, send some money for me. They wrote on the blackboard, and we'll come in. Ellis, you know, in high school, they call it by a I don't know why. Ellis by lunch today. 
Some are walking. Bittersweet. The animal of the person. You know what I mean? Hell is my Hell is my Hell is my Hell is my No, sir. This time I should have been buying lunches. You know, man, I was a party. I couldn't forget that. But I tell you, those days I learned the art of negotiation. And that is why I, I could make sure I negotiate with Stephen very regularly. My mother teach me that. When I would, would go downtown with her at the West Green Street, motherfucker, watch her, I observe. When I was going by an orange, I was a dozen for the orange. The vendor would say, 120, 120 for what? <laughs> my mother never accepted the first price. <laughs> and my mother, I think if the vendor had said, I used to say, how much does it for the iron? And the vendor said, one dollar, one dollar for you. <laughs> she never accepted the first prize. I think, I think that's where I learned the, the art of ne negotiation. But you know what we're talking, I'm saying, she's not alone. If you see a little black boy at the 12th annual JBDC Small Business Expo as keynote speaker. Nagabal. <laughs> but I just know that she would be thrilled and probably jumping up and down right now. Jesus what was she be saying? So now I call myself a ghetto misfit. I was sure coming up Father's Day. I'm a ghetto misfit. What does that mean? Can I think about it? Every time I tell people I'm from the ghetto, most times, I have some friends here who, who can attest to this. They say, I think, uh, ghetto. Mm, no, no, they express disbelief. I don't know why. Because every time I go into my memory, I could have come up with my days in Norbrook, or my days in Cherry Gardens, or my days in Russell Heights. You know, all I can remember is Third Street, Rima, Trenchstone. I was rough in the ghetto. I tell you, I was the, the smart one, because I read. And I learned something to survive. Cause in the ghetto, it, you have to can survive. Cause rough fight. When you're going to get there, you can't fight. You can't even dare say you can't fight. You know what I mean? And fights break out quite often on the football field. You know, some simple thing. Anything with the words your mother, it must must be a fight. From your mother in it, anywhere, fight for block. Sometimes you don't want to fight. You know, I mean, you sort of imbibe that old adage. Sticks and stones may break my bone, but words can. It's not true anyway, but it was a survival thing for me. As a matter of fact, I learned how to fake fights. When I put a football field and I fight, I was talking to me in the war. I said, hey boy, how are you? You want to say yes until you come back. <laughs> Just say yes until you come back. Four. I remember I look for like a stone. Hey, boy, I must tell you, boy. I told you, man, I bad man. Hey, boy, I want to stay there so I can come back. And I said that thing I was far away. I could have come back. Come here, come back here. Baby. Only a girl with a big brother can't fight for you. And I could have said, hey, I got my big brother, baby. That would be a little confused. Don't leave that of my big brother's child. Uh, you know, so I was a bit, I never fit in the stereotypes. I became an became a, a archetype of the ghetto who, who grew up there, but never really absorbed those stereotypical definitions of a ghetto youth. You know, violence and that kind of thing. You know, cost by the ground, that kind of thing. Uh, because I miss me. As I go to the right there, come inside. She keep me indoors, I tell you. Often. I thank her for that. You know, but I tell you. Those were my, my memories going up in the ghetto. So I wanted to be an announcer. That was my thoughts in those early days too, you know. I was singing in work. I said, okay, I want to be an announcer because I, f I found that I had an affinity for voices. I like to imitate people, impersonate people, you know. So I'd have my own radio show and pretend that I am the, the radio show host. Uh, I used to pretend to be Barji. Well, at that time, well, Barji was still on the radio. <laughs> I was still on the radio. So I would pretend to be the announcer. Yes, Ricky Man, Ricky Man, Haiti, Ham, Rabbit, Sudo, Pop Molly, Hunting Bomber, Ray Ray Nine, S, I, D, N, T, N, T, N, T, N, T, N, How about, let's talk about love, though. Who do you love? Ray Ray Nine, Ray Nine, S, I, Love, Rita, and Cindy, too. 
I was going to come over here, so I said, I want to be here in Monsa. And that time, but fast forward to many years later, I was working, and my brother gave me a call, Blacker Ellis, you know, my brother, Blacker Ellis, you know, uh, he gave me a call. And I said, What's going on? He said, Yes, that's it. And I said, What? He said, yeah, That's it. He stutters, but he masks it very well. He's well trained. Brilliant, man. He said, That's it. I said, I said What's it? And the play, come over and call um, what a plan. And I said, Get some other plan B, so we will come and make we do the play together. I mean, I said, well, I mean, you know, I mean, the time I work for all of the time, too, and I said, you know, well, all I'll do that, too. But the thing is, the company was very really shocked then, right sizing at the time, and um, I thought to think about whether I should leave. So, because my brother invited me to start business with him, Ellis International, which is his now, I said, all right, maybe we can, since they are making everybody redundant, I can request a redundancy. So I went to the chief accountant at the time, I was very close and said, listen, tell them, say, you have to make me redundant. You know, you have to go to the, the UK finance director to get approval. And I was tell them, say, you know, this is true, man. Tell them something. Tell them, say, I'm a joker. <laughs> I was get rid of me. The thief account and I went to the finance director and told him that Ian Ellis said <laughs> he wanted to be made redundant. <laughs> because you know, at the time, I was in charge of payroll. So I did a rough calculation and realized how much would I go wrong with. My brother wants to start a play, so we don't know. He came back to me and told me, said the chief account, the, the finance director said, if Ian Ellis wants to leave, tell him to resign. He said, resign? No money? 14 years? No, sir, I mean, it's stressful. You know, and things, at the time, they restructured and redeployed many staff. Some went to Ocho, U.S. Golden and I, I was the only one sent to Strawberry Hill to work in the accounting department. It was nice, Strawberry was nice, but, you know, m m m m at 14 years, I mean, not now, go on, as I say, everything had changed, no one thing. Go on, let's start business, but, but we need some money. Tough thing is, after many months, I realized they were not going to give me no other answer, so I had to resign without a dollar. 14 years live without a dollar. By this time, Black are reading what, what are going to the things are going. And um, we he told me we got some space. Center stage theater is available for two months. Went to the theater operators and said, um, we can stage a play, you know. And he said, Yeah, it's vacant for two months, so you have to pay the federal rental fee. No, 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 we said, listen, it's a good play. When the people say, come, I'll start making some money. We pay for the very rental fee. He said, listen, here what I want. <laughs> you see, if you want things one, you pay the money now, I change the premium to things not one. <laughs> Trust me, it was tough for us. At the time, I had my daughter's school fee. She was here right now, too. She got that story again. I tell you, I said to myself, if I don't pay my daughter school fee, I got the well run prep school, then they know the attendant issues. You know, they're gonna put out a class, yes, I did not pay the school fee, embarrassment, and all kind of thing. I pay the venue rental. But you know, recently I saw a, a video, a viral video by an American uh, from his TV host, Steve Harvey, a video about jump. Have you ever seen it? He said, jump, identify a gift, take the chance and jump. You know, and I think at that time, I jumped. People very went and start things around, which was fairly successful at the time. Won the Actor Boy Award that year too. Um, it was um, good. You know, things around won Actor Boy, the first best generation in the uh, Pretty good, and we did, did, did have some uh, monthly series to backyard cock up with my friend Christopher Tommy Daly um, at the time to every last Wednesday. I don't remember that. Backyard cock up every last Wednesday at um, Backyard. So we did that in, in the early years for a number of years. And my fact, they, the comedy cook-up series became an end of year show, called, which is now called Christmas Comedy Cook-up, which is only here every single year. This year is a sweet 16. But four years into the, the, the company, I we decided to venture into television production with some discussion with some collaborators who you know, was pretty ambitious, exploitively so, we learned later on. <laughs> but we wanted to go on the TV, but we never have enough money to start the TV show. 
at the time, myself and fans got, big up fans got anyway in there, you know what I mean, working for several years. I kept telling myself we've been working for more than five years now. A lot more than that. But I tell you, when we were performing for many years and on TV for quotes with TV ads and things, so we were becoming a household name at the time, I would think. And we got a job to perform in Cayman, and the, the CEO who gave us a job was so pleased. He said, what can I do for you? I said, well, for two years we've been shopping a TV show, two years, you know. And he said, well, okay, come to my office. And I made a call and went and talked to him. It was difficult because I did, at the meeting, the, the, the marketing director was like, we don't have no money for this. What is this? The ITM fans got show. What's that? What's the ITM fans got show? You know? But then he was so pleased with us. He said he was going to give us a gift. That was a gift he gave us to start the, the first year of the ITM Fans Cut. So I'll tell you something. Uh, those monies, those first year, colossal loss, because it was absorbed by the technical production uh, at that time, because we had to pay the people to shoot the thing. So we were in front of the camera, earned zero dollar. But I'll tell you something, though. Success. 99% preparation, 1% opportunity. We were prepared performing, you know, every day a comedy. We were comedians, you know. And so when the opportunity came, we took it up. So the first year, it was a lot. I don't think anyone remember the first year. The first year, we interviewed guests on the show. We interviewed um, Lady Sa, no Minister Marion Hall. Uh, we interviewed uh, Richard Stevens, you know, Tess and Chin. You know, and nobody put it on the mind. Until the second year, when we, we started to some skits, and we saw on the news some police drop out around Van back. Preparation. 99% percent preparation made opportunity. When we see the people, we say, ha, we can do something with this. That was the first episode, the first thing people see, and trust me, people say, boom. A matter of fact, I have something we're doing, I said, they were working late, and saw it, and everybody stopped working. I said, no, I have this man. So that was when the show be, um, began to grow. Never earn anyone in the first year, second year at all, but we had to go and continue through the, the, the series. I'll tell you something. Uh, I had to be writing numerous emails. That's when I learned my own self-determination, learned what it meant to be by pursuing your own thing. You know, I, I couldn't employ the marketer. I didn't understand what marketing is. I didn't understand what scholarship was. I thought scholarship meant donation. Listen, scholarship don't mean donation. I thought two different things. And um, scholars were unwilling and we didn't understand. We, we have to prove feasibility. You know, you have to take on the role of a, of a marketer. Later on, I learned a very simple thing called a value proposition. A very simple thing. And when you go to the bank or you go to a, a, a partner or a sponsor, you must prepare for them a value proposition. A list of benefits that accrue to the sponsor. You cannot tell them and say, yeah, yeah. you go to a sponsor and say, yo sponsor, give me some money, I'm going to show you a shot. I'll show you about sell. Let's give you some money. Oh, it has started before. <laughs> yeah, well, where's the research? Where's the data to support that? It about sell it down now. You know, that, that don't work at all. You must prepare a proper value population that tells them, you know, what value and make sure that the value that you're giving them is more than their spend. Make sure it's attractive. These sponsors get emails from Hundreds, hundreds of emails every day, bombarded emails. And what's going to make? What, what, what is going to stand out for years? What is going to make years different? Why will they pay attention to years? So I, I learned a lot. And now, in fact, at the time, that's why I thought education was important. I wanted to learn more. That's why I thought about doing the MBA program at MSBN. And people were saying, I think we have to school up here. People don't know where they are on TV and we are going to do it. We have to school up here. Yeah, what? I said, well, I mean, maybe I can be exposed to some concept theory, some knowledge. You know, knowledge is important, you know? Learning is important. And things. so I, I started to pursue that course too. It was a difficult thing because I didn't have a first degree and you know, you need a counting background, you need to have a first degree. Luckily at the time, Amber gave him uh, approved 10% of the cohort to be allowed. I wouldn't get in. It took me a long while up and going up there and meet with the meet with the dad at the time to get in. But I got in. People saw me in the class. What? Joking. Get in the class. IT. You know? So I said, why? Well, I, I saw this every day now. Free show. <laughs> you know, them people said, well, I don't know. I'm going to say, come here. I said, well, I saw this shit. You know? But when I said, you know, I'm going to join my class. You see, I take notes. You know what I mean? But 
but the thing is, it was an important experience for me. Um, I tell you, there was failure, but I overcame and I've overcome failure. Matter of fact, no, people love say failure is not an option. But I don't say that. I said the fear of failure is not an option. <laughs> you may feel sometimes you get to feel big, you know, can you learn success? Is a poor teacher. It's true the failures, but I learn a lot of things. So at the, at the university, I learned something. I learned about the, like the port of five forces, learn to analyze competitiveness. I never know that before. You know, I can analyze competitive and realize that at the time, theater and television. And I look at both industries for us at the time. We were competing with, um, the, the rivalry was, was fierce at the time because all the theater shows happened at the same time. And we don't have a space. We had to be renting the space from our own other theater. So, you know, that's bad enough. Supply of power for those who are familiar with the concept. You know, because he owned the space, we rented the space from him while he's rehearsing. So, he's, he's earning still, even in his downtime. So, it's been difficult for us to compete with him, you know? Uh, and, and the thing is, it, that was, a, 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 in, in my estimation, a high barrier to, to entry because we need to find a place that we could call home that we could stay there so the play can develop and people can come. But when we think about TV you now, we are comedians. That genre of entertainment that we discovered, sketch comedy, when we look at the competition, there was no other like product like ours. So we discover, I can tell you now, competitive advantage because we know what our core competence is, that we can make people laugh. So and therefore we have that. And people try to compete with us. The, the, the barriers for entry is very high because sponsors make it very difficult for creatives to get into television. You know, so the barriers for entry are very high there. But I tell you, uh, people came in. I remember Rabbi Shanti Life came, then the Shibada came, and, and people came in the space. But I think that people fell in love with the item of Fancy Got Show. It was sketchy, it was different, and we were doing different things. The first time I see any Jamaican lampoon, a prime minister in the country, a matter of fact, the show peaked in the third season. The biggest thing was 2010, May. The story, the news, Al Miller picked up Mr. Christopher Coke. He don't make a joke about that. But not I turn fancy cat. <laughs> We're going to make a joke about everything. You know? I think we got a, a kind of a permission from Jamaicans to just lampoon anybody. Remember that skit one time that Ebola came out at the time. We were spoof. I don't know if you see that spoof. Ebola came out and we were spoof and Ebola. And when I went downtown and did the spoof, when we realized it was us, hey boy, it's here for you. I'm going to tell you something. Nobody can come here. Come. Hey, I'm look. So I realized we are the only person who got the right <laughs> to lampoon him. So television compared with the theater for us was a better business doing the analysis, you know? And we did 10 years of the Art and Fancy Cat Show. <laughs> now, I'm thinking about exporting now. So I want not only to target Jamaicans, but I'm glad I want to put a show up on Netflix and other things. So we come up with a concept called Be The Boss. You know, we have to, we have to grow the product. I see the government to uh, participate and engage and increase the engagement for us too. You know what I mean? I mean, listen, when I think about it, um, the Chinese, the Chinese are here. China wants to be the, the world's greatest um, construction company. They go everywhere and they are very much in Jamaica here, you know? And I say, what is the opportunity? When you say things, find out what is the opportunity. The opportunity simply is, we have to learn the language. We have to learn standard Mandarin. So I have to go and to learn Mandarin. Mandarin, yeah. That means I want that. And choco means I want this. Somebody go and correct this later on. <laughs> Somebody go and say, no, that not this. But the point is, I am learning Mandarin. So if Umma says that is 1.3 billion people in that country, if you have to seek ways to integrate with them, you can imagine we do a TV show and the subtitle in Mandarin, 
You know what I mean? And I'm saying, fans, let them lick the lesson. I mean, hey, we have to start think like that. And think about how we're going to explode. So the, 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 country, the, the, country, the government must encourage us because imports are very easy. I remember the Colombians. Who oh, remember the Colombians? Yeah. Who came to Jamaica? Yeah. And they came and did well. They bought their stock, sold it to us, took all the revenue to their home country, Colombia. And they never, any week, this is going to be the last week. And they never, matter of fact, they couldn't say anything. They couldn't say anything. If they were here right now, find the camera, find the camera, I'm going to ask you now. Find the camera. If they were here right now, I'm going to say this chair. I'm going to find myself this chair. Okay, okay, today we're going to be selling you a chair today. It is a very special chair because it got four foot. We got a one foot, two foot, three foot, and four foot. It is a special chair. You can sit on it like this, or you can sit on it like this. It is a special chair. What are you doing there? You're supposed to be here. This chair, normally this chair is for $50, so we're going to sell it for half price, which is $50. I'm sorry, me sorry, papi. From Jungle to Rima, from Tivoli to the Marches, they assimilated the culture. They did it very well to reach us. And every time me, I bought a lighter. They told me that I will never, have, never use a lighter. I think it's going some nearly a decade now. I have a lighter. Light my stove. He said, "This lighter for puppy, puppy, puppy. This lighter for the puppy. You use this lighter. You never use your matches." You might want to know. Anybody want to jump in? They came here, and they were allowed to come. But the government must continue to uh, engage us. Because when we are doing a TV show, employment opportunities are ripe. We employ people. It stimulates employment. We employ actors, writers, directors, directors of photography, video editors, camera operators, sound engineers, gaffers, grip, wardrobe, hairstylists, production assistants, barbers, lighting technicians, makeup, makeup artists, graphic artists, producers, caterers, jokers. I finally include jokers, which are the, uh, we call the King Douglas, Great and Storyteller said, the E are some jobs, the E are some are good jobs. Doctor, lawyer, investment banker, teacher, police officer, soldier. Joker, uh, good jobs. Yeah, but the thing is, this field, intellectual property, in terms of the asset, timeless. Look what happened recently. Butcher Banton was locked up for nearly like 10 years, and his songs were not locked up. As a matter of fact, he did not sing a new song, and came out, and have, he had an unprecedented record of people coming to see him. Never before, not in my lifetime, have I seen this. Anybody want to the show? Yes. yes. Crowded. Bush Banton. Uh, sell out, sell off. I tell you, and I, I'm saying that, listen, if the government, I'm sure if I ask him, but so, um, did you get any incentives to be in a city equipment? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Incentive. Go down of my salvation. Shout out to God, to me, to me, son. Run the move, no big city, put some money, not the kitty. I mean, that's my problem. <laughs> he came, it, it showed the poor of Ben Jamaica. Because, listen, the creatives are perhaps some of the best earner of foreign exchange. Bruce Banton, like the comments came in, Bruce Banton went into Massa, earned US dollars, he went into the Barbados, also Trinidad, he met what we now know as our version of Rita Adams. He was a, you know how he was? He was a police coach over there, like the news, in like the front page, just a Trinidad, you know? 
And I know Adam said probably upset, you know. Ah, see the, the, the commissioner over in Trinidad. He acting as if he, he is me. <laughs> now he is on TV. I have a bojo. And I just want to say to him, he should stop. <laughs> because if he don't stop, so it was in the beginning. <laughs> so it shall be in the end. Because I realize it's a revolution of all Adams. You know, you can't come, you can't come, you can't come, you can't come. No, matter what. no. So I am saying that the government should, you know, increase their support. Because yesterday I heard that there was some support there for taxing same thing waivers for us too. Because to bring in equipment that goes obsolete very quickly, the bigger version, by the quick, a new version is on its way. We need to be able to bring in these equipment vehicles. Um, it's an incentive that can help us. But the thing is, I want to encourage the, the creatives. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. Proverbs 18, 16. Trust me. Press you, push, continue. I told you before, even now, I have a, a family business that I am benefiting from more happily, thank God, because uh, my daughter who went to the university, she's back now having studied and that investment, or uh, if you want to call it an investment, that, that, that skill set, she's brought into the business and the business is growing, you know. The thing is, it's very useful. My daughter, she loves languages. She loves Spanish very much. I keep telling her to, Spanish is good, but Mandarin, <laughs> learning Chinese. Matter of fact, if, she, if she's here now, she, I still have research, she gets excited. Anybody, especially natives, she want to talk to them. Matter of fact, she's talking to some people now. She always show me on her Instagram or she's talking to natives. Good conversation. You know what I mean? They are there at the supper because I see the guy text her about a pregnant car. But I'm telling you, tell him, say, no pregnant car around here. Yeah, no, 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 I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I never know, so I am embarrassed. That is, but no, 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 no. I'm telling you, I did not know Pregunta mean to act, so I'm embarrassed. You know that you cannot be embarrassed because that means you are pregnant. It's what I call cognates. She's teaching me, you know. I have to learn. I'm, I'm into languages. It's so afternoon, so I encourage them. But I tell you something. My biggest supporter. I tell you why. Biggest supporter. A lady I know. January gone. 21 years of marriage. Karen Ellis. I tell you. Prepare for the speech. I'm going to write a whole speech and go up and read it. So that, that's, that's not you. Boring. Be yourself. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's be yourself. You know what I mean? Because if you want to see, it's the, it's the shit, yeah? I'll go up and read the whole night for all of you. You know what I mean? Just say, no, 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 no. It's good to prepare. Get the notes. But go and be yourself. Anywhere you go, anytime you go, anywhere you go, every time you go, yourself. It's going to be there. You cannot get away from yourself. So, see that? I thank you so much. She is shining. The future is creative because knowledge is accessible. Anybody can do anything now. So, stop about me know this. Knowledge is becoming uh, devalued because of a compared to creativity. That's why I thank JBDC. For stepping out boldly, boldly, I thank JBDC for deciding that they are going to put their efforts into encouraging, monetizing the orange economy. I think we should give them a round of applause, please. All of them, applause. I thought we were the entire team really happy. Thankful that they 
the, the sponsors came on board, the Sartico Bank and the others who really made it possible because it's important for us. Future is creative. Nobody can go through anything right now. As a matter of fact, you're going to be able to be paid for your thinking. You have to start asking, how much you're going to be paid for my thinking? That's it. Nobody can take your thinking from you. can be learned anywhere. The future is creative. And that's why I learned about positioning for the marketers again. You know, because what happens in the mind, you know, this is positioning. You know, you see me step out in front of you, you're going to remember the pants. If you forget the speech, you now forget the pants. But with all that said, I must say, everything that I do, God of night. I just be that. So I tell my children, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And if I know it, the Proverbs 3, verse 5 and so I could have come here. I'm not going to nothing. <laughs> All many creatures are willing and ready to recognize that the future is creative, to, to step out and learn different ways to approach bankers, investors, to recognize that you can't just say, I want the money. It don't work like that. If you are here, I have an orange to give. When you go home, remember, say, you came to this event, JBDC's 12th annual, and I to give a, 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 a card of this. That is not orange, it's orange. I say, I no, it's orange. So I have a orange or oranges to give you. The first person who is willing and ready to go into the future, come check me. Anybody eat orange? Do you know what orange and you never see this orange again? <laughs> orange are special. I'm going to bring a dozen. So 12 persons. Come here, let me show you to me, gentlemen. Yes, yeah, son. Willing. Something for willing. Priceless oranges. Share it. But I thank you. I thank you for engaging me. I thank you for inviting me. I thank you for allowing me to come here. Can you imagine? Keynote speaker, comedian. I am creativity meets business. I'm in front of the camera. I am behind the camera. I'm in the business of it. I am I'm all over. I tell you, so I'm inhabiting this creativity meets business idea. And of course, the floor is now open uh, for any Q&A. Thank you very much.